Well, thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogel's European Outlook. I want to look at the uh, Global Sea Service temperature normally today because um, a couple of interesting things um, that kind of grab, grabbed my attention when I was looking earlier this morning. This is off the Tropical Tidbits uh, site, by the way. This is the CDAS uh, Sea Service temperature normally um, based on the... Uh, the 1981 to 2010 um, anomaly here. And you can see that the North Atlantic has cooled um, quite a wee bit in recent times. And um, if you look at the uh, year to date, the two bear temperature anomalies here globally, there is pretty much uh, across the board warmth stretching from the British Isles through much of Europe, apart from, uh, I suppose, the uh, southeastern portions of the continent. Um, but right across uh, the, the, the northern half of Eurasia, uh, we have got uh, warmer than normal conditions, warmer than normal across the North Pacific. Not surprising, based on the warm North Pacific Ocean. Uh, interesting enough, we've got uh, cooler conditions across North America, as you can see here. But uh, we've also got a lot of warmth stacked up both across the North Pole and across the South Pole. Now, of course, there is the argument um, increase in um, water vapour as opposed to carbon dioxide is the reason why that we're seeing the warmth greatest across the poles as opposed to across the equatorial region. And if you notice the equatorial region, uh, it is actually rather cool. Now, Africa, interesting enough, is a very interesting one because interesting, uh, I'll say that once again, uh, is reading um, cool and normal, if you notice here. So is much of China, so is much of India, um, despite the fact that we've got a lot of reports about the, the excessive heat across parts of uh, northern India, Pakistan, the Middle East, so on. We've actually got a cool and normal year to date for pretty much all of of India, which is quite uh, interesting to see, and uh, we've also got warmer, uh, cool, and normal across the uh, really both Americas. If you notice here, um, so that is worth noting. Um, if you notice here, this is the global temperature normally here, according to the Tropical Tidbit site and the data from CDAS. You notice here, warmer than normal across the North Pacific. Hence the warm and the normal air temperature. Look at the Mediterranean basin. It is boiling. So is the Black Sea, if you notice, or the Baltic Sea, should I say. Um, we've also got warmth across Indonesia, Central Pacific, up into the North Pacific. We've got the still ongoing uh, La Nina. But it's interesting to see this uh, supposed cooling across the North Atlantic. Why do I say supposed? Well, this is making um, a little bit of a contradiction here. Um, and I can only imagine that this is potentially based on old data. Now, somebody, I'm sure, will be able to point that out to me. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But this here, folks, looks a lot warmer than what this is indicating. And that is confusing. I'm finding it very confusing. So it's, it's like, are we seeing the Atlantic cooling? Or are we not seeing the Atlantic cooling? Now, based on also the data, this is the average. So back on, uh, you know what, early May, we had an anomaly up towards 0 0.6 Celsius above normal. Now, we're sitting slightly below normal temperature-wise in terms of the anomaly here. So uh, it's going to be interesting. The year to date is warmer than normal across the board. Uh, you know, across Europe and across Euro Northern Eurasia here. We've got a lot of cool down across more um, the lower latitudes, if you notice here. And uh, it's interesting to see that. And uh, If you look at Europe here, it has been a very warm year to date, particularly across western portions of the continent. Why would that be the case? Probably uh, a big contributing factor will be the warm North Atlantic. Warm North Atlantic leads to milder winters. Mild autumn uh, last year, remember September, warmest on record for the British Isles. Um, and uh, I think the, 
you know, the very warm autumn, uh, the very warm sea surface temperature normally uh, probably uh, did its work on feeding back to the atmosphere and producing a pretty warm winter indeed. If this has some merit and we are seeing the cooling that we're seeing at the moment, this could get interesting towards the second half of summer and particularly so in the autumn and then winter. If we get a different type of autumn this year, i.e. cooler, if we cool the North Atlantic, we could uh, set the stage for something a little bit more interesting as we push towards the winter season, 2022-23 uh, here. So uh, just a few thoughts, a few thoughts this afternoon as opposed to anything uh, particularly structured. Uh, I want to know what your opinion is of it and uh, whether I'm talking garbage or not. Um, or whether I've got a point, it'd uh, be interesting to find out. UK temperatures here finally uh, warmer across uh, England and Wales. We're starting to see high pressure toppling in from the west. That's a warmer air mass. It's going to increase the humidity level. So even in Perth, when I was dropping trailers, um, I noticed it was cloudy. It was actually raining quite a wee bit. It felt very sticky. And uh, it's because the Atlantic is now starting to pull in that warmer air originated in North America, crossing over the Atlantic. It's picking up the moisture and, of course, in enhancing that humid feel to the air as well. So, um, and we're going to see warmer temperatures across eastern portions of Scotland. Across the board, really, we're going to see warmer temperatures, but I think we are going to see uh, probably the warmest uh, day of the year so far for Scotland in the next couple of days. If we get sunshine, 25 degrees quite possible in Aberdeenshire or Tayside, I think. So that's it for today. Uh, rough and ready, a bit random. Um, I'll hopefully be back again tomorrow with more. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.